All right, thank you so much for uh, the uh, for giving the opportunity to talk at this conference. Uh, my name is Leandro Giordano Almeida. I am a senior machine learning engineer here at Y Labs, and I'm introducing an awesome uh, open source tool that we've been working on, uh, which is called Y Logs, and it's specifically talking about an awesome feature that we added recently around image logging, and it's specifically trying to understand what we can log in terms of semantic information for images, which is very important when we're creating our machine learning models. Uh, also, one additional tool that we had was an integration with MLflow, which makes it much easier for you to experiment uh, and compare your models during the experiment and production and, and so forth. Uh, so what are uh, the main things that we're going to be discussing? The first is why do we need uh, logging with approximate statistics, specifically around images? Uh, and that is really to figure out how to scale properly to real world data sets, real sizes, real scales, uh, or when you are doing deployments. And then we go back and figure out why or why are we logging in the first place, right? Um, what are we, do we need to log? What are the things that we're, we're trying to keep track of? Uh, when we have real uh, machine learning deployments. Uh, and then we go back again and say, what are we going to be logging? Uh, because not only that's a very important information when it comes to specifically images, because there's a lot of information that we can collect. Uh, images are not uh, straightforward and maybe a, as a, a series of numbers, there is interpretations going on and our models may make interpretations that are not expected or beyond the scope of what we intended the model to do. So the first step is talking about approximate statistics and what, how is that going to help us to scale it to real world size data sets. Uh, approximate statistics, you may be familiar already with min, max, averages, and standard deviations of all the distributions, but there are other things that we can collect, uh, and which is really great, approximate distributions. You can actually get a full distribution of your data in a streamable batter uh, that is still approximate. It's not an exact distribution, but it allows you to at least understand how your data is being distributed and compare it to different points in your pipeline. Uh, but Ylogs makes that even easier uh, by just, you give it a specific feature and it will compute all the quantiles associated with that uh, feature, uh, the approximate distribution, standard deviation counts, type counts, uh, top frequencies. And not only that, if that data is changing over time, we can keep track of the number of nulls. Uh, if the type of data has changed, all the one that you're expecting even floats, all of a sudden there's strings. Uh, or if, if there's specific uh, type of data like Boolean, or there are nulls associated with it, we can keep counts of that. And that's very easy for you to go back and read it again. And one of the awesome things about any of these approximate statistic methods is that they're constant memory footprint. Uh, and one of the great things that we we have with the wide logs tool is it allows you to merge different sets together. So that means that you can collect this information in a very distributed way. One of the main philosophies we try to do with wide logs is to keep the setup uh, as minimal as possible. Uh, and depending on the course of the use case that you have in mind, uh, the, the package itself is open source and available right now at GitHub. Uh, and we're constantly releasing new features. Uh, one particularly that we're going to talk today, uh, which I show here on the screen, is logging images. And you can log images directly from the path or as a NumPy array. Uh, and you can uh, do tons of feature transformations that you can log of that image itself. Some of it is already uh, already introduced within Ylogs, and others you can add as, as custom information. And this is some of the things that we're going to be talking to about today. And it's even easier when you're starting to do experiments, right? So if you're doing experiments with MLflow, uh, you can easily just enable uh, logging with Y logs and allows you to log that information within your experiments, which allows you to easily compare it between, the, between experiments or between experiments, uh, between your production um, test set and your deployed data, data set that's streaming. And like I said, this uh, methods really uh, are for real world size data sets. Uh, even when you look at specific data sets you may find on the, uh, online, like the Lending Club data sets or New York uh, tickets or Pinto's uh, data sets, which are very large in size, uh, the memory cons uh, consumption is constant, right? Because it really depends on the number of features that you're logging. Uh, and again, the output size is also small. And if you want to compress that even further because you need to send it to a monitoring uh, solution, uh, it, it, it requires very low bandwidth. So what again are the steps? Uh, one was how do we scale that? That's using approximate statistics. And that's really already included in Y logs that you can really use right off the, the bat. So this is how we are going to be logging. The question now becomes why do we need to log? Uh, <laughs> and then what are we going to be logging in the case of images? 
So why do we want to log? I think one lesson that we have all have learned over the past potentially decade or more is that you know testing doesn't stop at your test set, right? You, when you deploy your model, you also may uh, encounter problems that you didn't expect at the very beginning because uh, changes in the data sets, changes in the targets that you're looking into. Um, and so it's very important to keep those in mind when you have a model that's being deployed and you may not have access to the validation data. So when it comes to monitoring deployments, uh, these days there's a lot of names that comes with uh, modifications and monitoring things that you need to do to your model or maybe affecting your model. That could be called data drift, a model drift, concept drift, uh, domain drift, uh, or something that I like to call you know, head to tail drift. And these may happen in a certain, um, if you look at it over time of your model, you may happen in a certain shift or maybe gradual, or may even have a seasonal um, um, dependence on it that either may be due to the problem that you're looking at or some other behavior uh, that you're not aware of. And now there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between the left and the right size, but usually data drifts are associated with the input data being inherently different, right? Model drift and concept drift are facts where you are maybe affecting the targets uh, themselves and they are modifying their behavior or the targets are changing over time for because you use a specific window when you do your training or when you do your production set data set testing. There are concept drifts and domain drifts, uh, sorry, domain drifts and head to tail drifts. Domain sh uh, shifts are associated with your the training set actually being biased compared to what you started with. And head to tail drift, where potentially your the task you're looking at is actually dependent on only outliers. And you only have the head of the distribution to start with the training and the production testing. And so when you go to actually the deployment, all you have is trying to figure out outliers and your, your data set is not the same. It's inherently different from what you started with. So what do we want to log? I mean, this is uh, very important information and we're gonna focus mostly on images in terms of what we want to log. But in terms of your overall model, uh, I mean, the easy answer to this, you wanna log everything, right? You wanna log every single step of your pipeline in terms of data coming in and out. Um, potentially, you also want to figure out specific task metrics, right? Your model may be doing a, something specifically, but the task that you want to achieve is much greater than that. And usually people would call this business metrics because you're dealing with models that are deployed for a specific uh, business goal. Uh, those are easy because those are indicators of whether your model is serving its purpose. That's very important. But you also may want, ideally, if you want to figure out how well your model is performing because you are have a very good fit with your task is the performance, right? How well is the model performing? And that requires validation data, which you may not have during your deployment. And so when it comes to inputs and outputs, uh, what kind of information can we collect in terms of images? Um, and the great thing about images is these are files and they may contain a lot of metadata information in them. That metadata information can give you a lot of insights into the specific semantics of the information, right? You may be also part of a specific regulatory uh, process, or you may be tied to a very specific device to which you're uh, having your model deployed to. This you can check on the metadata or it can make sure that it can be written ahead of time. So also your pipeline may be dependent on sources of data that are beyond your control. So understanding the encoding, the raw resolution, the aspect ratios are very important. Sometimes the models are shifting to a specific size uh, that is different from the one that you're inputting data. Sometimes you're downsizing the image and that's okay, you're losing some information there, but sometimes you're upsizing the image and that you're in, including information that's based on a specific interpolation model. The aspect ratios may change and that may uh, actually affect how the aspect ratios your model are uh, expecting. Um, the great thing about uh, images also is that you can look at different features besides just the uh, information that's there in terms of pixel uh, data. There's also image-based quality in, uh, uh, metrics that are based on some kind of reference sets uh, that you use. Uh, there may be engineering features that you want to look into, outputs. Uh, the outputs may be actually image-based or non-image-based in case you're doing some segmentation or actually detection in case of bounding boxes or contours or more other informations like uh, key points. Or maybe actually the latent variables that you have in your model or latent variables that you're passing out to another uh, model to use to contain some semantic information about your images. Uh, in the case of file metadata, 
Um, that could be, again, device, encoding, raw resolution, aspect ratio. In Ylogs, now you can collect all the XIF uh, information from an image file, and we're constantly trying to add more information from different types of file formats. As you, you may know that image formats can come in their own uh, specific varieties, and they contain very specific metadata that are um, based on who created uh, that file to begin with. And you can change sometimes the metadata associated with it. It's very important if you have some kind of straight pipeline, you want to make sure the device is the same, especially if you're dealing with microscopic data. You want to make sure that the resolution and size and zoom of the image is the same. Um, if it's zo Even though the image size may be the same and the aspect ratio may be the same, the zoom of the image may have changed and that information may be contained in the metadata. And if it's not, maybe one good thing to point out to, to somewhere back in the pipeline to include that information to make sure that there's no changes in that so that your object sizes are actually pretty constant or at least relative to the same size, especially when you're doing some object detection in microscopic images, for example. But there's a lot of information beyond that that it could be very useful to try to debugging a process or trying to understand what has happened to your data itself. And the other one are feature distributions. Um, these could be image quality assessment metrics where you have some kind of reference set that you want to refer to, um, engineer uh, features that you are computed that are related to some specific feature of the image, like a blur, or it's just looking at saturation to see whether you're looking at landscapes, uh, or some more uh, uh, key points uh, engineer features. These could be learned features that could be that you have learned through the model, like latent uh, uh, values, like embeddings, for example. Or it could be an output, like in case you're doing uh, semantic segmentation, where you actually have an image of the segmentation itself that you could process in some way. Or the outputs themselves, like the contour, size of the objects, uh, or potentially classification and scores, for example. So in case of these uh, feature distributions, uh, usually in image quality assessments, you usually have a reference set to you are referring to the quality that you expect the images to be this. This is very common in medical and microscopic industries where you have a reference set of how good the quality of the image is. And then you take your image, you compute a feature based on the comparison between your reference set and the image set. And that is the information you will log. One of the great things that we have in wild logs, or at least we, we added it, is the ability to create custom functions. So that means that you not only log your image, but you can also create custom functions which you can transform that image or potentially create all these uh, image quality assessment metrics that you want. We're constantly adding new metrics uh, that are, uh, we would say, out of the box within Ylogs, but it's very easy for you to add your custom one if you have a specific thing in mind, or if you, for example, you want to add a model uh, output associated with that to your logging. Uh, these features could be engineered, uh, learned, and output. So again, uh, when it comes to non-reference sets uh, or non-image uh, quality metrics, sometimes you may have a reference set that you want to refer to, and these you then log separately from your image. And then you can, by looking at approximate distributions from the set that you currently have, you can compare your distributions and see if there was a specific shift. And now you can use your specific uh, statistical uh, test that you want to. It could be a KS test where you can see whether there's an actual difference between the distributions themselves. It could be a KL test because that's more tied to the specific uh, uh, um, information that you're getting out of your model. Or it could be simply like a Hellinger distance where you're computing the distance between uh, specific means and, and shapes of your distribution. And again, all these can be customly uh, created uh, based on your needs. Uh, and you can just add, daisy chain them. The API is very similar to Torch Vision. Uh, you can just, uh, they, can, they don't even have to be images. They could be tensors and NumPy. As long as your transform can transform them, uh, you can log that information in that you can literally use as a reference point. Um, also, one of the uh, great things that we added in terms of the API is you can actually just you know, add a folder and we'll try to log all those images or in as long as we can uh, read them. And if we not read them, I mean, this is something that is a great thing about having an open source project. We can easily add, uh, uh, tools to be able to read those formats if it's not available. <laughs> and you can also add a whole list of features that you can compute, you know, brightness, saturation. These are just some simple examples uh, of simple functions that you can either create or are already uh, defined within Ylogs. So when it comes to segmentation information, um, usually you're looking at embeddings, for example. Uh, I think one thing that we, it's really useful in terms of understanding what your model is logging in terms of semantic information is looking at the boundary between semantic uh, categories. 
Um, one thing that you can do in Y logs is look at those distributions, right? How far it is from those boundaries uh, as a measure uh, of your distribution. Usually when we look at embeddings, we tend to put embeddings in some kind of uniform sphere where we can easily look at distances and compare them in a zero to one ratio. Uh, to see, you know, distances that are objects that are very closely semantic in terms of metric learning are, you know, close to zero, where ones that are far away have a constant size, like say one in this case, uh, or the diameter of your uh, n-dimensional sphere. Uh, there are many variables that you can compute. For example, one, one that's really cool would be the pair distance between. It's a one-dimensional variable that you can compute between your data set. Now, that could be over your data, your entire data set if you have a, uh, the resources to do that, or it could be per cluster. That means that as you're training, you can understand whether the semantic information is shifting or changing over time. And that might allow you to get a better understanding of how your semantic information is actually distributed compared, for example, from production to deployment. Or you can keep some of uh, even simple one dimensional uh, that are not associated with two point correlations, but just single one point correlations, which is the distance for each embedding compared to the center of that, uh, of that cluster or category that you, or that you define. And you look at those distributions and see how those are changes. And those centers of the clusters could be abstract centers that are actually geometrical, or they could be the, the closest actual concrete example uh, that is closest to that center. And that gives you something that you can go on from um, training to training, experiment to experiment, or potentially to a deployment, which is what you want to do. And lastly, the, the one thing that you can definitely log is the outputs of your model, right? Uh, definitely, as, as, as your model gets outputs, it's going to change over time. And understanding why it's performing in that way is very important to, to look at the outputs of your model. Are they changing over time? Are, is my confidence being constantly low? And is potentially that could be due to something down the pipeline or the performance of the model itself, or it could be just due to the input data that's coming in. And if you look at the drifts in that potential inputs in case of images, you can try to um, um, figure out exactly and debug the process as you go along. For example, look at the size of the object you're detecting, right? If all of a sudden the, the tail, the distribution of the sizes starts getting uh, smaller, like you're getting less and less larger objects, maybe something has happened. Maybe the zoom uh, of your image has changed. Maybe there's semantic differences in the image. Maybe it's looking at something completely different that you started with. So these are the kind of informations that you can keep quickly log uh, with by logs over time and quickly compare uh, these distributions um, so that you can easily see if something has changed or shifted or drifted over time. Um, again, just to go over the steps that we discussed, uh, the goal for us is to use approximate statistics to really scale to these large data sets, which is very common in images, especially since each image can be quite large, not only in terms of memory size, but also in terms of data that's contained in them. Uh, approximate statistics, we went over them. Uh, these are collected automatically by Y logs for your features in case of images. Uh, and we're adding more and more, um, more tools to use other types of semantic information like audio, text. Uh, so feel free to come and join us uh, and contribute to that. <laughs> uh, why are we logging? Right, we went over that. Uh, it's very important to detect potential drifts in your data. Uh, models when they're deployed, they may not stay the same. The data may not stay the same. Uh, logging semantic information is particularly important because there's information that beyond the pixel values. Uh, again, it's a scalable process. It's constant memory consumption. This is very important when you're having a deployment and you're constantly getting data in. And you may not want to keep all that data, especially uh, as you're logging. So it's right now available. This is a short link to that GitHub link that I showed before. Uh, try today, uh, help us uh, contribute and really build a standard for uh, why, what we want to log and how we want to log it. Um, so I really hope uh, you guys can join us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate the support of Y Labs and, and this whole conference for giving the opportunity to speak. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in on the on the GitHub on uh, the GitHub uh, repo or just send me a message. Thank you.